Hey everybody, welcome to the 2019 National College Dodgeball Championship at GFSU. Uh, the Fieldhouse Arena at Grand Valley State uh, University. 22 teams from 10 different states showed up to see if they can overthrow the reigning champ GVSU. They've won 10 times in 12 years, including the last six years in a row. My name is Gar Punnett. I'm here with Kevin Bailey, one of the reigning national championships of GVSU. Tell us about your career a little bit so we can get to know you. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm a former player. I played for Grand Valley from 2012 to 2016, and I was lucky enough to be a part of the start of this championship run that they're currently on. So this is pretty incredible. So um, who are we having today in our first match as we, uh, as we get ready for this, this upcoming match? First matchup of the day is uh, Saginaw Valley State, the eight seed against Akron University, the nine seed. So this is going to be a very interesting game. There's a little bit of history, history between these two teams. So it'll be a fun storyline to follow throughout the game. You were telling me, oh, here we go. Looks like we're getting ready. Um, they're warming up. Um, you were telling me a little bit about this uh, this rivalry that this team has. Can you go Absolutely. into more detail? Yeah, so uh, the first year Akron joined the league back in, I believe it was 2015. Uh, these two teams had a little bit of a scuffle, I could, you scuffle. could say. Scuffle's uh, generous, nice. Dur during their game, okay. and there's, there's some arguments, and there's just been a history since then. And uh, actually, interesting note, the last time these two teams played, it came down to the last second. Saginaw Valley scored a point with one second to go, forced overtime, and was able to win in overtime against Akron. Would have been one of Akron's biggest wins in program history, so uh, that was an awesome game to watch. That happened back in February, but... They get another rematch here today. It'll be fun to watch a bracket play game. Loser goes home. Okay, yeah, this is it. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the strength of the teams this morning? Um, what have you seen, sort of how they've developed over the season and maybe the back half of the season? Have they really sort of come into their own? Yeah, so one thing to keep an eye on is Saginaw Valley State is arguably the best catching team in the league. Uh, one of the biggest benefits in dodgeball is if you're able to make a catch. It's a two-person swing. You get someone in from your team. And that's at the same time, the thrower has to go out. Uh, so that's one of the things that has sort of carried Saginaw Valley throughout the season to be one of the top teams in the country uh, is just their ability to catch at any point in time. Their anticipation is fantastic oh, when yeah. it comes to that. Uh, so that's something we need to keep an eye on all day long. Uh, on the other side, Akron, their top-end talent is fantastic. When it comes to their top five or six players, they're as good as any team in the country. Uh, one of their issues is their depth, though. We're going to have to see if they have the depth to hang with a team as experienced as Saginaw Valley, but uh, their top-end talent can carry them to win, so that'll be something to watch. Now, what can you tell me about what it's like to, you're, we're watching these players warm up right now, what is it like, um, what do you need to get warm, how does that work in terms of your arm strength, and then how is this all sort of preparing you for the marathon of today and trying to make it to that final bracket? So as you may expect, dodgeball takes quite the toll on your body, especially your arm. Uh, so. It is really important to get warmed up, get loosened up your shoulder, your elbow, everything, uh, because it's so demanding on uh, on the players. Okay, yeah. And then, what was it like for you personally? What was your what was your go-to focus? Did you know? I was talking to one of our other uh, hosts coming up, Brett. He said that he wasn't actually really into the warming up his arm. He was just all about mentally getting into it. And then, what was sort of your personal sort of go-to strategy for warming up? I would agree with that. Obviously, you have to get warmed up physically, but. Uh, when it comes to a tournament like this, such a marathon, the two-day tournament six, takes such a toll on your body, you need to be mentally in it at all times. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's something that you have to work with your teammates on because this is a team game. You can't be all by yourself trying to uh, get focused and get in your zone. It's about being in the zone with your teammates and making sure that the communication is going to be there at all times uh, because teammate, uh, teamwork is so important in this format of dodgeball. Yep. Um, so what can you tell me a little bit about the unique rules of the NCDA, um, I know that uh, there was. I was talking to people about um, the difference of some leagues have pinching. Um, can you explain pinching to us? Actually, I've got a, a dodgeball here. What can we see from the players in terms of how they're going to be throwing? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So first of all, we're using the eight and a half inch rubber dodgeball. Where there's some leagues that use foam, some some leagues that use what's called no sting, which is just a smaller seven inch, a okay. uh, little bit easier to throw uh, that type of dodgeball, but. Here in the NCDA, we like uh, keeping it as brutal oh as possible. Yeah, we have the the eight and a half inch rubber dodgeball that I'll tell you it really hurts when yep. it hits you. Yep. Uh, and yeah, we do a thing called pinching. So basically, you grab around the ball, you grip it like this, uh, and when you release the ball, it's going to give you a little more torque. So it's going to give you a little bit now more. Now go ahead, show that a little bit more to the camera. So this is literally you are grabbing the ball and you are just 
hurling it? Is there a particular strategy when you're when you're pinching this ball? Yeah. How do you throw it? Because there's going to be some some yep. sort of curve on it, right? So it depends on your play style. There are some people that are going to do a little bit of submarine throw, and it's going to curve upwards towards the opponent. Some sidearm where it's going to curve sideways, and then. Uh, one that you're going to see a lot today is people are going to try and get the over-the-top throw when they pinch the ball, and that's going to dip down into someone's foot. It's difficult to catch. It's really hard to block so as well. So drops. That's okay. one of the things where when you see a, t a player make a catch, it's impressive just because of the movement and speed that is on, that are on these balls. Excellent. So what we're seeing right now on the, on the screen is we've got uh, the teams are meeting. What's that sort of? What's the captain meeting like here in the center court? And then what is what are sort of these teammates saying to each other as they're getting prepped up? Yeah. So. I mean, today is Championship Sunday. This is what it's all about. You've been practicing training all season for this day. Uh, so both of these teams are just talking about what we need to do to be able to make it past the first round. There's, there's going to be five rounds of games for the teams that are playing uh, here in the round of 32. You've got to be able to be on your A game every single game because if you lose one, you go home. There's no second yeah, chances this here. Is, this it's is it. single elimination. Uh, so both of these teams right now, they're talking about as you see, Adam Pfeiffer, the captain for Akron University, they need to be on their A game at all times. Akron University, they're, they're not the favorite in this matchup. They know that they're going to have to play as good as they have all year if they're going to be able to upset a team like Saginaw Valley State. Okay, I'm feeling this energy here. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm getting really into it. We're going to start the game soon. Looks like they're getting the ball set up. Um, we're going to explain a little bit this gameplay to some of our newer viewers. Um, what you're going to see in the beginning here um, we're going to start to pivot, actually, and start to watch this game. What we're going to see here, and I'll get Kevin's opinion on this, is um, our two teams are going to rush in here. Um, it's 12 v 12, uh, 10 balls in play. What's this like? What's this first rush like for you as a player? So you're going to have to watch on this opening rush. Both these teams are going to battle to try and get ball advantage, and basically what that means is uh, is that your team has over half of the balls on your side. There's 10 balls total in the game to start. So uh, if you can get over five on your side and win that opening rush, racing the other team to half court, uh, that's huge because it's going to give your team an advantage to start the game. And the whole flow and of the game goes from there. the flow. Here we go. Rushing in. We got a battle over the ball in the middle. Early hit right there. Akron down one already. So what we're seeing here, everybody, is essentially you're going to have two teams kind of go side. They're going to sort of command each other's side. Um, on Explain to everybody a little bit about what I was learning yesterday about how the wings are so important and how you've got your gunners and you're supposed to protect your gunners as they come in and try to get these kills, these tags. Absolutely. So this is such a team sport. You need to push up and down the court together as a team. Uh, and if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to protect your teammates and they're going to be left open to get drilled with a dodgeball. So... <laughs> It all comes down to communicating and knowing uh, with what you're doing with your teammates if you're pushing up the court or, or getting all the way back to that baseline. Um, yesterday, it was so funny. I mean, I was, I was here. Oh, nice hit oh, by nice Joey hit. Stack. Hit. So we got number 35 is out. And keep an eye on that number uh, number 25 there for Akron, Joey Stack. He 20. might be their best player overall. Great um, thrower. In great a thrower and one a good of their, catcher. One of their best catchers as oh, well, nice. yes. So I'll tell you, again, what I was, uh, I was learning yesterday was – you have a very specific role, and it depends on sort of your strengths on the team, whether you can throw that ball or whether you've got some great hands on you. And you can really, because you can really swing a game if, if you've got a catch on you. 100%. Catches are crucial oh, in, the, in this we almost format. Got, we almost got a hit on. Yep, that was a great dodge. On Saginaw. But you will see uh, different players have different strengths. You're going to have throwers on each team. You're going to have people that look for catches more. Uh, you're going to have people that even are focusing on blocking for their teammates. So. It looks like we, we got a block. team catch there by uh, Adam Pfeiffer for a Akron. Here we go, here we go. Oof. Who are we going to get? Oh, that was a great dodge. These players are so quick to drop to the ground. It's so talented. Everything's on the line today. You <laughs> yeah. got it. And that's, I think, what I was going to say before, which is the, the whole energy is different than yesterday. We had our sort of preliminary rounds yesterday where we were sort of figuring out seating, and now the, the tension is much higher in the, in the, in the building. 100%. I think these guys, they, they seem like they're playing a little safe to begin with. They're sort of easing into this a little bit. I would agree with that. It looks like uh, Saginaw and Akron are both just feeling each other out for this first point. Uh, it is an adjustment to kind of get back used to whatever that other team's strategy is. So this first point's going to be a little bit slow. They're both kind of seeing what the other team is trying to do and, and adjusting from there. Now remind me, uh, who won their last, their last showing? 
That would be Saginaw Valley State. Okay. In fact, so they Saginaw State's in uh, S Saginaw Valley is in red. Correct. And then Akron's in black. Okay. Yep, Saginaw Valley has actually never lost to Akron oh. uh, in, in program history. So okay, this so Akron's got a lot to lot to work on right now. It would be a huge upset for them if they're able to win this oh, game. Oh, that's fantastic. So number twenty-five. Is number twenty-five, Ken. See that for that? Uh, for Akron, for yeah. For Akron, yeah. That was a great throw, and he's oh. Oh, nice dodge there. Adam Pfeiffer pushing up again. You'll notice he's going to be one of the main guys pushing the pace of the game for them Is that the captain day of long. Akron? One of Akron's captains, oh, yes. one of Akron's captains, nice. Good look there. It looks like Akron's pretty comfortable in the way that they're playing right now. They're yeah, content really. with getting to the back line and sort of pushing the pace from there once Saginaw comes up to really throw. Really confident, yeah. Good throw there. Ryan Anglum, someone to watch for Saginaw Valley State. Uh, one of the best catchers in the league. I, I think Akron's going to avoid throwing at him at all costs. So we've got a one-man advantage here on Akron. Or no, maybe two. Looks like they're up two players. Yeah, up two. Up two. That's big. First yeah. point of the but day. But that could all change with a catch. Let's see what Akron can do here. They decide to go... Oh, oh, what a throw. What a great throw. Fantastic play. Kyle oh. Bruce. Oh, that's captain right there. Well, keep an eye on that number 37 for Saginaw. He's coming up to throw right here, too. Oh, and we got a catch. We got a catch. Catch wow, by Grayson Hood. Here Saginaw we go. Here Valley. we go. Here we go. Oh. And that's a team that's catch. That's a team catch. Kenny Mize helping his teammate out. His teammate would have been eliminated if yep. he didn't catch that ball for him. Uh, now, do you, get to, do you get to bring someone in on a team catch? Absolutely. So okay. you get to bring in a uh, teammate, but uh, the thrower is not out because it wasn't caught by the okay. initial target, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of different rules to keep an eye on, but when it comes down to it, it's dodgeball. You get hit, you're out. It's a pretty <laughs> easy game to follow. <laughs> exactly. And we'll be going through all the complexities you know, as we go along, some of these rules that um, are really going to change the gameplay. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about uh, shot clock, actually, while we're here? Uh, sure. The rules. Yeah, so as you see, uh, the teams are kind of flowing up and down the court, and the reason for that is uh, there's a shot clock on each side. Essentially, each team has their own shot clock for that team as a whole, not individual players. Oh, so we had a big out oh, right here. Number nine goes down for Saginaw. Oh. So as I was saying, uh, we have a 15-second shot clock. Essentially, one person on, e on a team needs to make a throw within that 15 seconds, or you get a sh shot clock violation. Which we just saw. Uh, we have or a stoppage. Stoppage, timeout. Looks like a timeout was called, so we're going to go back to the baselines. Okay, timeout uh, was called. Yes. So we were talking about the shot clock violation, 15 second. Yep. Um, what happens if, if a team violates? If there is a shot clock violation and someone doesn't make a legitimate throw, which basically means within uh, diving reach of, of the opponent, uh, then there's going to be a shot clock violation, and that means all 10 balls get to go to the opponent. Uh, and that's a huge swing because yeah. when you have nothing, to, no balls to block for yourself, it's just a firing squad you're coming just, at you. Yeah. So you're just trying to catch anything, yep. dodge anything. And another thing to keep an eye on, when a team gets down to five or less players on their side, their shot clock then switches from 15 down to 10. Yep. So it becomes much more frequent that you have to throw and the pressure really gets on Gotta you. Got to keep the pace going. Yep. Here we go. What can we get? Good throw by Kyle Bruce. Keep an eye on him. He's one of the best players in the league. Uh, he's been an All-American for two straight years. So he's going to be an anchor for Saginaw Valley. Right, I know we got Jacob here. Oh. Oh, and a hit. Oh, wow. Hit. Okay. Pretty even on both sides right now. A slow first point. Yeah. Uh, we're six minutes into the game. Two 25-minute halves here in the NCDA format. Uh, no point scored yet. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the format. Oh, that almost looked like. A good block by yeah, uh, great Josh block. Lyons. One of the toughest players to get out in the league. Oh, really? Uh, is number nine there for I love, Akron. I love the... There's, there doesn't seem, I mean, each team has their star players that can really pull their own weight against each other. Sure. Um, and it really seems like that's what makes it such a great team sport is you really need sort of your depth to actually have um, some great talent as well so you guys can pull ahead. Yep, and as, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things for Akron, they, they haven't had the depth that other teams, other top teams in the league have had uh, over the go. years. So Winding up. Oh, and a good look there, but just misses. One thing for uh, the fans at home to keep oh, an eye on nice as well. Block. Yeah, good block there. Uh, we have what's called soft boundaries here. Uh, and basically what that means is you can step out of bounds as long as one point of contact is still in. So critical. I so was watching that yesterday. That was literally, that could be the deciding factor in it. Both a catch, a dodge. 
Oh, nice dodge, wow. hitting the floor. Kyle Bruce stays Kyle alive there. Kyle Bruce. Quick on the drop. And it looks here we like go, here we go, he had a standoff. Akron has more players in the jail now. Uh, Saginaw's had yeah. a little bit of a run the last couple minutes here. Yeah, momentum seems like it's definitely shifting. So again, we're gonna do uh, two halves, two 20 minute halves. Or is it 25 minute halves, 25 minute It'll halves? It'll be 25 minute yep, halves right. today. Today it's 25 minute halves. So it's a long game. They're sort of feeling each other out right now just to see what the strategy is going to be like. But you'll see a lot of points scored still. It's not going to be 0-0 all day. Right. Uh, the best part about this, what I think was most enjoying, what I was most enjoying about this game is the timed aspect of it. You know, you can have, you can try to rack up as many points as you can um, in one half as long as you're in that 25 minute um, clock. Exactly. What do we so have? What do we have happen here? This you're, is you're not only uh, playing against another team, but you're battling the clock as well, right. uh, and that's something that is more exciting to watch once there's a team that has a lead. I love the standoff uh, that's happening right now. Yeah. You've got very little balls on Saginaw's side, and so Akron's sort of commanding the space. Exactly. They have a little bit of an advantage. Oh, oh and he goes down. He ref calls him out. So that was a close one. We didn't know if that hit the ground first or it hit his hand. Uh, but what's but so disappointing about that is he didn't necessarily have to go for that. He was just trying. He was trying to get that, get that out. Sometimes good catchers, yeah. they need to make sure that they don't reach. Right. Uh, wait for the ball to come to you. Don't don't reach and yeah, don't. leave yourself open for an easy out. <laughs> All right, here we go. And a hit. Wow. Okay. Saginaw. And that's a big hit. Josh Lyons goes down. One of Akron's best players. So they're now. In trouble, and they're on the ten count. They're down to less than five or less than six players on their side. Oh, we had a big out there! Wow! Oh! oh. So and they call him out. They have a call. Wow! So what we just saw there was number, I think, sixty-nine. Yeah, sixty-nine on uh, Tom. Uh, yeah, Masteller tried to dodge the ball by falling on his back, doing a drop fall, and couldn't quite keep the toes in bounds, and so we got called out. Oh, great catch and dodge! Wow. Wow, that Kyle was Bruce. that was incredible. And keep an eye on number 44 for Akron. He's a rookie. He's been their hero in a, in a couple games this year already. Okay, let's see. Oh, and he stays alive there. Three players left for Akron. Okay, let's see if they can hold on. So again here when we're explaining the rules of how you get a point, what Saginaw's going to do is they're going to try to eliminate Akron here. That's going to get them one point for the half. We still have 15 minutes to go, so Akron could, you know, very feasibly make up another point in this half. Oh yeah, certainly you, you're gonna see more than one point scored in most halves. Uh, but yeah, they still got three players to eliminate and Colby Bryceland over on the far side coming up to make a throw. All a right, really tough player to get out here. as well. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh! What a dodge. Oh, I loved that point of contact. <laughs> that was awesome, sliding on his back while keeping his hand in. Disregard for his health all together, exactly, falling just right on his back. Oh, oh hit right wow, to the chest. Right to the chest, hitting him in the floor. Too much power on that one. You're going to see these players throwing upwards of 70 miles an hour today. So it, it's not easy to get out of the way of that or even try and catch. A little bit later on, I think I'm going to try to get uh, either Kevin here or uh, our other co-host, Brett, Maybe throw some balls my way. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what I can do with that. That'd be exciting. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd love that. I think you'll hold your own. <laughs> I don't know. I was watching you earlier. You hit the top corner over <laughs> here pretty pretty quickly. <laughs> Kyle Bruce. You still got up. the aim. You still got the aim. Yep. All right. Here we go. Oh, he was trying to do a cross court shot. Oh, oh what, a catch. what a great catch! Now that is a devastating swing here. Ryan Anglem. Kept keep an eye on him. He's a great catcher for Saginaw Valley. And they're down to two on Akron's side. Yeah. So we've got, do we still have the freshman in here? This Jacob yep, Weber is still, still in. Jacob still in here. Uh, and he's, when he's the last man left, he's still a threat. He can make okay. a catch. Oh, oh, good luck there. Oh, that was close. All right, so we got Kyle Bruce still sizing everybody up. He's going to go for Oh, was, what a throw. So he had to throw it because... A shot clock. Shot but clock yep. was counting yep. down. You'll see the counters on the sidelines. Uh, the teammates on the sideline will also count with them just to make sure that they hear the count on the court, even though we got a crowd here. Oh, oh. wow. That Dis oh. Dislodged the ball from his hand, so he's out. Oh, and a catch. that's it. That's a catch. There so we that's, go. That's Saginaw's first point in the half. 13 minutes, 18 seconds to go. 
what's sort of our reset time looking like here? How long does it take for everybody to sort of get back to the baseline? So we're just going to get a quick huddle. Usually it's only a minute or two, and okay. then they'll, they'll get back into the action. But basically both teams just need to kind of regroup. Uh, Akron obviously losing that first point. They need to figure out what, what adjustments they need to make right now if they're going to be able to get back in this game. So we've got Saginaw in red right here and Akron in black. Um, Saginaw is on our left and Akron's on our right. We're resetting the team after Saginaw just scored its first point in, well, what is this? Uh, I can't do the math that quickly. <laughs> it's about 12 minutes. So and it took about half of the, it took half about half the first half. half. Half of the first half. Um, we have 13 minutes, 18 seconds left. Uh, plenty of time for another team to score. Um, Aginaw sort of, or Sa Saginaw is uh, resetting its strategy. Akron's getting ready to, to actually put up a fight again. Yep. Try and tie the game up. And it, it's still easy to get a comeback. It's only 1-0. There's plenty of time left in this match. And actually the last time th these two teams matched, uh, matched up, Akron against Saginaw back in February. Saginaw was down 3-1 to one in the second half, and they were able to come back two straight points wow. in the second half. Uh, they took one with only a second left on the clock, actually, to force overtime. Uh, so anything can happen. It's still very early in the game. Uh, if adjustments are made for Akron, they have more than enough of a chance to come back and win this game. Yep. All right, we're getting both teams getting ready to rush. We've Here got we their go. captain giving them some strategy. It looks like they're saying, hey, if you get to those balls, push them back to us. And a pretty even opening oh, rush. Nice block nice there. Nice block. Now, what, so both of these teams rush, and when they were in the neutral zone, they kind of none of them threw at each other. What's why was that? Yeah. So the more important thing for some teams is just to get that ball advantage on your side instead of picking off a couple people. And you saw number oh, 85. Oh wow, that's oh, a and they're big out loss. Wow. 23 goes down. Adam Pfeiffer for Akron. He's one of their veterans. Oh, and a great hit on Jake Bruce. Joey Stack back in the game. And another hit. Kenny Mize takes down number 95 for Akron, Joe Scott, another one of their better players. So Akron already has two of their veterans in outline. Okay. Well, they can come right back in. Oh, was it just Joey Scott? He was he was one of the bigger players. Yeah, he had a big throw in the last. Oh. And that's Joey Stack there, uh, number 25, that just made that throw. Joe, okay, got it. In the middle. You'll see him. Manning the middle of the court, similar to what Kyle Bruce is doing on Saginaw's side. Uh, those players are crucial for each team, just dictating the pace of the game, if that makes sense. Oh, and a drop. Wow. Nice hit by Stack. So Saginaw, a couple of their top players also in the outline already. So this is going to come down to a little bit of a tep, uh, test of depth for each yes. team. Yes. With some of their players that maybe aren't the ones that are counted on to throw as often, they're going to have to make some plays here. All right, so what you're hearing maybe in the background here is we've got a shot clock going. Um, again, that's 15 seconds for each side each yep. side to throw a ball. Um, it's so critical, honestly, for each team to communicate that effort. That is an out. Nice hit. Wow, great hit. He tried to block it. It went right through, hit him right in the chest. And Saginaw's got some arms on their team. They're throwing the ball hard. So, again, the, the shot clock is so critical. Um, Communicating. Oh wow! Cross, cross court throw here. Brandon Snyder goes down for Akron. And I'm just going to finish this thought, and then we can move on. Is again, shot clock so important to communicate because that's what can reset um, the entire momentum for this. Yep. For this standoff between these two teams. Wow! Yep. Great throw. Great drop. Great dodge. Wow! By Saginaw. And the pace is picking up a little bit. Akron only a couple dodgeballs on their side actually right now. Uh, so that's a bit of a disadvantage. Looks like advantage to Saginaw right now. They've got two guys, two two man oh, advantage. Oh, and a catch, oh, diving great catch. catch. Oh my gosh, that's going to swing them. Oh, great team catch. They get to, oh, right as they get one in, they lose a player. So we actually do have the captain back. Is that Adam? Yeah, Adam, Adam Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer. By, he got back and in. And he gets an out right off the bat when he comes back in. Now explain, how does the jail work in terms of, is it first in, first out? Absolutely. So uh, you're in jail in the order that you were eliminated. So Adam was the first one out on, on Akron's side. So he oh, was, great Oh, drop and he gets, and gets eliminated there by Kyle Bruce, takes him down. A nice a, low throw, hits yeah. him in the shins. That's a tough one to catch or dodge. Adam is not happy about <laughs> that. 
and Akron down to five already. Saginaw threatening to make it. Here we go. Here we lead. go. We've oh, got these nice great, throw. nice teeth. We've got these great throws going. Again, what we're seeing here is these players are really pinching these balls, and they can really put some spin on it. Great throw, oh, wow. great catch. McDonald, amazing wow. catch. This is, this is really turning for Akron. And that took out Akron's last remaining nice veteran. Nice dodge, great jump. Yeah, that was Jacob Weber again. And the freshman. He's going to have to make some catches if still Akron wants in. to get back yeah, in. Yeah, still in. He's been holding the team strong. Oh, that seemed like a mistake. Tried to go for a catch with a ball in his hand still. You got to try and do a little bit of a drop catch. Drop the ball in your hand and catch the other one. But Here we go. Not quick enough. Oh, oh there, there you saw the drop catch. A smart play by like him. I feel like they baited him into that. Absolutely. And another Yikes. catch. Wow. These Saginaw Valley, unbelievable yeah, catching Saginaw's. Oh, oh, and a hit. Got another hit. Down to one. That's Jacob. Huge loss for the survival of, of Akron. And, and then a catch by go. Kenny Mize. Catch. There we go. Saginaw up 2-0. Wow. Saginaw got a, got a point in about four minutes. So yep. it's really momentum starting to go. Akron's got to sort of reset their strategy here. Team captain Adam really trying to look like instruct the team more than motivate them right now. Yeah, and Akron's got a couple great captains on their team. Uh, Adam Pfeiffer, Colby Bryson, they actually were two of the people that founded this club uh, at Akron University. So they've oh, been fantastic. here since the beginning for that team. Uh, they're both in their final year right now. And they want to see if they can get past Saginaw Valley and make a run at, in, on Championship Sunday here. I mean, still plenty of game time. We've got eight minutes left in this half and then another 25-minute half. So they can pull it together. I'm sure crazier things have happened. More than enough time. We've seen plenty of two-point deficits overcome. Uh, we saw some yesterday. Uh, in the first day of Nationals, but it's still very much in the cards. They've just got to execute now, and they haven't been doing that very much in the first half. Some of their top players that the last time they played Saginaw, they had a fantastic game making catches. Saginaw seem to have adjusted, and they aren't putting throws on Akron's best catchers. Yep. It looks like I'm, I'm loving this, this conversation between Adam Pfeiffer here and, and the ref. Um, Adam came up, seemed to be apologizing for something. He's a passionate player, so. 100%. <laughs> in I think he was kind of just sorting out a little bit of a miscommunication <laughs> yes. with the ref. He probably didn't like a call that was made last point, yep. but you that's know, part of the game. That's how it goes. The ref's got to make the call that they see. So, And Adam's got to make that catch. That's just the nature <laughs> of the game. So, I agree. All right, here we go. So we're going to see both these teams rush in. They're going to get, wow. Uh, that seemed like a borderline false start on Saginaw, but great advantage on them. He got to the ball quickly. And if there is a false start called the penalty, uh, the penalty for that is that team has to take out their captain uh, to start the. Wow! Play. They start in the outline, so. So no matter who's, no matter what team false or what uh, player team, false starts, and the team that false starts, wow. no matter who it was, the captain has to start in the queue. They're the next one in, uh, so that's coming not, in from the jail. It's not going to make uh, your captain very happy. Uh, absolutely not. It <laughs> happened to me once before, and I was oh. not pleased about it. But oh. it's part of the game. All it is is your team trying to get a little bit of head start because the run-up is so important, and Saginaw did a great job on their run-up there. That's nerves. That's ambition. That's <laughs> you, wanting, you wanting that kill. Good dodges there by Adam Great Piper. dodges. Here we go, Adam winding up. Oh, we tried to get a, a catch in there. That was like a protective catch, too. He was coming in to save a teammate. And you see Saginaw's sideline yelling at them, get back, get back. Saginaw's such a great catching team when they can square up at, on their back line. They want to get all the way back and force Akron to play in the neutral zone. Yep. Then they can just rip it. Yep, just like that. Almost almost took down a player. Saginaw looks so comfortable right now, uh, the way that they're playing the game, pushing up and down the court as a team. What's so amazing to see is you might get you might get a player like Kyle Bruce on Saginaw um, who will come up and put himself in the territory to get hit, but no one's going to take the bait on that one and and throw a ball his way because they don't want they don't want to get out. <laughs> yeah, not on a guy like, like him. Uh, the, the top players in the league have that ability to really put themselves in a tough situation because they know they can get out of it. And it looks like Akron pushing to the back line now. They're going to try and get some catches going, I think. All right, here we go. Akron pushing up. We got Adam. Let's see what he can make. Oh, uh oh, backtracking. 
We got a block. Oh, and clips Kenny Mize. Oh. Great placement on that throw. And Scott pushes up. Here we go. They're no going good. Track. He's got a ball to protect. Wow. Oh, great catch. There it is. Joey Stack, one of their oh, stars. Oh, another great throw. Here and we go. Akron. That's a swing. Oh, and another. Oh, Jake Bruce goes down. Here we down. go. Here we go. This Akron. is that type of momentum we're looking for from Akron. They they are a team that play off momentum so much, and they need that energy if that they're going to come back. That might have just been a three-person swing right there. Yeah, if, if not more. If not more. Wow. Oh, wow. Looks like Kyle is uh, tempted to tempted to go for that catch there. Yep, and, <laughs> and he's definitely inclined to do that right now with some of Saginaw's top players in the outline. He wants to catch those guys back in. So he'll be a little bit more aggressive in that regard. That's what I was going to say. How does that affect the, the mentality of you as a player where you're like, I need to make this play. That might That's going to be a risk-reward scenario always. Oh, and good look there. And a Ooh, backhand throw. Backhand throw. I'm loving those. So far, we haven't seen actually many variations in throws. I'm, I'm excited to see some submarine. I'm excited to see some backhand. Yep, and you'll see. Uh, oh, oh, there's a hit. That's a great hit. So that was that Left was what's called a counter throw. Basically, when the other team comes up to the throw line, they're, they're, they have to backpedal out of there. So you can get a quick throw on them while they're standing there. And Joey Stack did a perfect job on that one. Perfect timing. That was. Oh, and oh, a hit. that's a big loss. Wow. Saginaw down to five. All right, here we go, Akron. This is. This is where they got to capitalize on this moment. Can't get a catch that could swing the momentum. They're going to have Saginaw holding back on their baseline. That's a huge loss for Akron, their captain, Adam Pfeiffer. Grayson Hood, a veteran for Saginaw Valley, playing in his last day of dodgeball today for SVSU. So he wants, he wants it all. Oh, good now block. Now both of these teams are on the road trying to head towards Defeating the national champion, Grand Valley. Yep. Yeah, so we are in the round of 32 right now. We got a whole long day of dodgeball ahead yep. of us, getting all the way to the championship later tonight. Um, but, yeah, right now in the round of 32, these two teams are battling it out to see who can play GVSU next Excellent. round. Or these, these or th two teams? I'm sorry, this is the round of 16. So are these teams going to be going on to play GVSU? Correct. This oh, is the 8-9 matchup. Uh, okay. So winner of this plays the one seed. Oh Tough my. draw for both of them, but yeah. uh, that's the way it goes. Okay. They got an uphill battle. Yep. Great throw. Nobody out. Akron, they've got basically their full roster in right now. Yep. Saginaw's really hurting. But one thing to keep an eye on now is the clock. We're getting down to the end of the first that's half. That's true. That's a great point. So we've got 9v5 right now. Two min or Three minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Akron needs a point. Needs a point to get on the board here, really round out the first half. And even if Saginaw only has oh, oh, a drop. That's a, oh, but there's a drop catch on the catch. far side. So that was pretty much a little bit of a swing. A little bit of a swing. Uh, but Momentum yeah. more than players. But here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh and a hit. great hit. Akron needs to start pushing the pace. Yeah. Three minutes to go. If they don't eliminate the entire Saginaw roster before the first half is up, they don't earn a point. And yep. we reset with fi uh, 12 on 12 to start the second half. That's simple. Here we go. Oh, nice great block. dodge by Bryceland on the, on the far side. Five players left for Saginaw still. A little bit of a swing. So it's 5v6. Oh, 5v7 it looks like. One thing Akron does have going for them, they have some of their very best players in. You have Kobe Bryson, Joey Stack, uh, Josh Lyons as well, who's looking for catches, and then Jacob Weber as well. Is, uh, is Jacob Weber in the corner over here? He's on he the closer the gun, side the here, closer number side. 44. Oh, Jacob, of course. Uh, who's our gunner here, number 11? Is this on Akron? Colby. Colby Bryson, one of their yeah. captains. Um, you're playing in his last last tournament as well today. Oh, what a hit. Oh, what a hit. He had it. And that was on Noah Womack for Saginaw Valley, who has phenomenal hands. So I'm surprised he actually didn't come up with that I'm one. He's sure he's disappointed. <laughs> he's known to make those types of catches. And All right, we're getting shot clock here. Low throw there, not even close. All right, so we've got these two teams sort of squaring each other up. We're going to get Saginaw getting ready to throw it. That was because of a shot clock. 
one and a half minutes to go in the half now. Okay, here we go. One Saturday and a half. half. This is it. They need to get those those tags. Here we go. Here we go. Winding up. Oh, and a oh, catch. Oh, that's a catch. That's going to be devastating. Nice job by Saginaw. Four players in now. They brought in Kenny Mize, one of Saginaw's captains there. Akron really needs to close this out. They got to push the pace here. One minute to go now. We're going to start to feel the pressure here of this team. They're oh, and there's a hit. There's a big hit. Akron's going to try to actually make some of these tags, which is going to put them in territory to unfortunately get more catches on Saginaw. It looks like Saginaw only has two now. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, no, Ooh. they have three. Excuse three. me. Three. Yeah, Less than a minute to go. Less than a minute. They really need to push the pace. If I'm a captain for Akron, I'm saying get all the way back and make Saginaw run in the neutral zone. And that's a catch. Down that's to two. A catch. And a stoppage of play. Wow, stoppage of play, 38 seconds to go. And that's a ball's over. So shot clock. I'm sorry, no, it was a timeout call. So Saginaw still does have one ball on their side. Akron has all nine. Do er, we know who called the timeout here? Uh, looks like the refs are talking with Colby Bryson right now. I okay. believe Akron is the one that made that timeout call. Okay. I mean, this is what I was seeing from gameplay yesterday, how timeouts can be so critical in the last minute of, yeah, of so the game. Yeah, so both these teams are really pressing right now. Saginaw just to conserve that 2-0 lead, and then Akron trying to get a point on the board. If they can get a point here before halftime, that's such a huge momentum boost just mentally for these guys going into halftime. If they can close the gap to a one-point game, You've got more than enough time. 25 minutes in the second half. Uh, you can tie the game. You can even take a lead. So there's more than enough time for them. But it would help so much if they could eliminate these last two players. Yep. Uh, we're coming right out of a timeout taken by Akron. Team sort of resetting their strategy. And what you're going to see here is one of the balls is placed right at midcourt. So uh, the ball was not in the possession of any player on Saginaw. It was stuck in the neutral zone. When a ball stuck in the neutral zone during a stoppage of play, that ball just has to be set at midcourt. Uh, so that's a tough situation for Saginaw because now they only have one ball on their side. And Akron has... So this is a tempting, tempting ball to grab, which might entice our Saginaw player who... We will see how bold he is. But yeah. generally in this situation, you're not going to go up against a whole <laughs> army of Akron <laughs> players true, Akron. that are going to be charging you down. Yeah, they've got a lot of players, a lot of balls. Uh, number 61 on Saginaw. Ryan Anglem. Ryan, uh, he's going to want to just hang back and try to get that catch. And he's a fantastic catcher, so keep an eye on if they even do a throw at him. Looks like they may set up a team throw here. Okay. 30 seconds to go. Team throw, let's do this. Oof, just a solo throw and another. Come on, we've got to get this team action going. Akron's got to get better communication right now. You've got to get a point before halftime. Oh, great catch. Wow, so that was 18 seconds to go. We've got another player in. That oh, player just got out. Ten wow. seconds. Ten seconds. Got to get two outs. So we're going to be go, go. cutting to a halftime break here as, as, this, as this half ends. Let's see who can really hold on here. It looks like Saginaw's going to hold on. They survived. Excellent. They survived. Well done by Saginaw. Good execution there at the end. Thanks for joining us for this first half of the Saginaw-Akron Akron game. Uh, we got 25 minutes left of gameplay. Second half, Akron's got to get those two points. Well, three points for the victory. So, so we're going to go into a break now. We're going to have you all join us very shortly. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, 2019 National Dodgeball Collegiate Championships. Again, hosting right now. My name's Gar Punnett. We've got Kevin Bailey here. Um, we're coming into the second half of the Saginaw Akron. Ooh, great game so far. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, we actually just got some stats in here um, to talk about these two teams. Who, in your estimation, I mean, who's who's sort of our, our leading MVP right now? We've got Akron. We've got Joseph Stack here, number 25. He's gotten a lot of kills. So Joey Stack's been one of Akron's best players all year, and you're going to see they're going to re rely on him all day long. So. Despite being down 2-0, he's had a good game himself. And then over on Saginaw's side, uh, they've had a handful of good players as well. Yeah, I mean, we've got Kyle Bruce here. He's getting a lot of kills. All right, best um, guys. Grayson are, Kyle, are Kyle and uh, Jake Bruce, are they related? They are brothers, yes. Oh, look at that. Uh, so two of Saginaw's right, top go. players. Opening rush, 
Opening rush, we've got some big outs. And, oh yeah, we saw that, that was nice. Oh, Pfeiffer was already out. <laughs> and here's the here's a little <laughs> bit of animosity between the two teams. Oh Argument. wow, we've got a lot of arguments going on right now. We're calling a timeout. So what we saw happen there, there's a rule where on the opening rush, you aren't allowed to slide because it's an injury hazard. Totally. Uh, and one of Akron's players, when they ran up to the middle ball, they slid through. I'm not sure if it was a slip or if or it was an, an intentional, intentional slide, but either way, that's a like that's a yellow card, so that player shouldn't have been able to grab the ball anyway. Got it. And what does a yellow card mean to the player for the rest of the day? So you've got yellow cards and red cards. Red card, obviously, you're out for that entire game, but uh, the yellow card is you're out for that point. Got it. Yeah. And out in jail or out entirely? They're not in jail because they aren't able to get caught back in. They are oh, out. Oh, they are out. Yep, so your team oh, wow. is playing down a They're player. Playing down, so you do not want that yellow. So right now we've got Akron sort of vying for their <laughs> their side of the story here. In a little discussion, uh, in this situation, only the captains are, are allowed to talk to the refs for this. Um, so the captains on both sides are up there kind of figuring out what the refs saw, what each team thinks it was, and Hopefully we can come to a good decision here. But yeah, the, the player needs to know not to slide in that situation just because of the injury risk. So let's talk about a little bit. I mean, we're going to get some live uh, uh, updates on some of these other games that are going on during this tournament. But essentially, on either side of our main court, we've got two separate teams also playing on their way to the championship. Sure. Are you familiar with which teams are playing right now on these on these other sides? Yeah, so we have Penn State taking on Bowling Green State over on court two uh, to the right of us. Um, and then over on the left, we have North Georgia playing against Ohio State. Um, both of those should be really good games as well. Uh, Bowling Green State actually made it to the Final Four last year, so they're a little bit worse this year. They lost a lot of talent, but... Uh, that game against Penn State, is, there's a lot of great athletes in that matchup. I was seeing them yesterday. They, they were looking really strong, and hopefully they can hold their weight here. So we're going to get another rush here. Looks like they're going to reset. We did, in fact, have three players out on Akron. Wow. Yeah, so they are calling the guy out that Oh, they're calling the guy the, the slide. Oh, and a hit. Another hit. Saginaw. Grayson Hood, another, another out for him. So this time we're going to be seeing... Saginaw on our right, Akron on our left. The teams switch sides after each half. We've got sort of, again, it's it's early in the second half. Both teams are sort of feeling each other out again. Oh, nice hit there. Nice hit Adam by Pfeiffer. Akron. Adam Pfeiffer getting pumped up. Yep, trying to fire up his trying team. Trying to they, fire up his they, team. They still have 24 minutes in this game. They have more than enough time to win this matchup. They just need to believe. All right, we've got Akron pushing here, pushing into the neutral zone. Um, for anybody who's unfamiliar with the rules on the neutral zone, can you explain a little bit how I was actually unfamiliar with how far you can press up as a team that's is trying to advance? Yeah, that is one of the most exciting aspects of our game here uh, in the, at the collegiate level is uh, there's different formats where it's a smaller court. It's more like a volleyball-sized court, and there's not a huge neutral zone if, there, if there's one at all. And so the volleyball-sized uh, court, that would be a 6v6. 6v6, 6 format instead of uh, a 12v12 that we yeah, have here. And we got the full college basketball <laughs> court. Uh, yeah. The neutral zone is massive in this format, and it requires athleticism to run up and down the court. Uh, you got to have stamina to be able to hang on for the full 50-minute game. But one of the things about the neutral zone is you're going to see people get caught in the middle and get run down really oh, easily. Oh, great catch. Oh, two players wow. out for Saginaw. We got a kill and a catch. And Akron's a team that plays fantastic neutral zone dodgeball. You're going to see some of their players are so good at backpedaling and still making a catch. I love that sort of it. It's, it's both offensive and defensive. Yep. One of the few sports where you need to be able to play offense and defense <laughs> at the same time. Just another unique thing Just about that, dodgeball. that split second where you make that throw and got, got ready for the the ball to come your direction. Yep, it's not like a, a Here we pitcher. go, nice block. Oh, good nice cross block. throw. Nice cross throw. We've got more advance here from Akron. They're going to try to go for a kill. Oh, Hit just the misses. ground first. Yeah, so you'll see it's not like a, a pitcher winding up and making their throw and following through. You've got to make that throw. Oh, with great kill, Adam, Adam Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. Wow, takes out Kenny Mize. And as you saw with him right there, he made that throw, but he planted and got back right away. You've got to get out of that neutral zone so you don't get hit by an opponent right after you throw. Saginaw down to five already. We're three minutes in. I like this. I like this momentum for Akron. 
Here we go. Let's see if they can get another one. Ooh, great throw. Nice block. Saginaw coming in. I love that instinctually, no matter what, most of these guys will just drop to their knees, get ready for a catch. Yep. Oh, oh nice hit. Cross court hit. Grayson Hood has been making those cross throws all day, and Akron has not made the right adjustment yet. They need to figure that part out because he's he's leading the team in kills. Oh, that was. He tried to make try, a catch with one to, hand. Yeah, trying to make the one-handed catch while keeping the ball. And a stoppage. Looks like we have a shot clock violation. Oh, that's a shot clock by on, on Saginaw. Saginaw Valley. That's going to be pretty devastating. What we have here is a 15-second shot clock violation. What that's going to mean is uh, all the balls go to Akron. That's huge momentum swing for Akron. They need they need to get a point as quick as they can to sort of get that momentum back. So uh, this is exactly what Akron had at the last half, which is they had a lot of players going against three guys. They need I mean, to just execute on, on a team throw. What Saginaw doesn't have to their benefit now is they've got a lot of time on the clock. <laughs> so what we can see here, though, is Akron's feeling the pressure to actually get a kill. They're going to try to make these throws, and that could result in some catches. Let's see what happens. That's oh, nice out. job. That could have been a catch. Great out. So you had the synchronized throw there. Three of them threw at the same time. And then Captain Adam Pfeiffer had like the trail throw is what they call it. So he was just a split second afterwards, and it caught them oh, by surprise. Oh, great kill. Adam Pfeiffer really coming in strong here. Wow, down to one for Down Saginaw. to one. They're going to try. they got to communicate, get a team throw here. 100%. you got to be careful. Even in, when it's one guy left, he can make a catch. He can make a catch, and that could be a swing. Let's see. Let's somebody... Okay, hit the ground first. Here we go. Oh, Good nice fake fakes. out. All right, backing up, backing up. Shot clock is going to need to go here. He's going to need to make a throw. And what's so dangerous about the shot clock violation is they want to make a throw that they necessarily aren't committed to necessarily as much. Yeah, um, so. And so it gives the, op the other team the opportunity to make the catch. Correct. Oh, oh there wow. we go. What a team Akron throw. Akron getting that point that they needed. Excellent. Five minutes off the clock, roughly. 20 minutes left. More than enough time. This wow. is a game. Here we so go. That was just an incredible point by Akron. Probably the best that they've ever played as a team. Uh, four and a half minutes, and they took a point off Saginaw Valley State. This is great. Akron really rallying here to get a point on Saginaw. With this much time left, I I could see us getting at least three more points in. Love it. At mo er, at minimum two uh, before the end of regulation. So. Now as we're waiting here, I mean, how do you, how would one, uh, how would somebody join the NCDA? Wh where do we start here? We've got a viewer who's now really interested in dodgeball. Yeah. They're at a college, doesn't have a team. What happens? That's a great question. So uh, we, uh, as college dodgeball, we, we try so hard to help, help schools out uh, when they're creating a team, whether it's a club sports program that wants to start the team up or even a student. Mostly, uh, most of the time it is just a student at a school that wants to start a team. Uh, and we'll make that process as easy as possible for them. Uh, you can check out ncdadodgeball.com uh, for more information. Check out uh, College Dodgeball on any, any form of social media. Uh, reach out to us, and we'll be able to help you get started. It's, it's a process, but uh, with our help, it's going to be really easy. We had, we had two teams join the league this year. Uh, just some, some student at the, at the school wanted to start a team, and uh, we worked with them, and, and they're at Nationals now. So. Well, look at that. Yeah. Come join the party, everybody. It, it's a lot of fun starting a club at your school, uh, and you get to compete against other schools uh, throughout the country, which is an awesome experience. All right, so we've got both teams here. We, uh, we were talking about how to join the NCDA. We missed the rush, but a lot of action going on. This two, these two teams are still sizing each other up. We're going to get a cross-court throw here. Looks like, again, Ooh, good luck. here we go. We got an advance on Saginaw. They're going to sort of start they to put call more pressure. Out. They called him out. Wow. Wow. So Saginaw is the team that needs to adjust right now. Okay. Took a 2-0 lead, but since then, yeah. it's, they have been flat. Again, it's all about momentum shifting here. Oh, great jump. Great jump by Akron to dodge that ball. Here we go. Oh, did not look like a – was that a kill on Bruce? No. Call him safe. Call him safe. All so right, Saginaw, it looks like they're playing a little bit too conservative. And that's, oh, oh what a hit. Oh, what That'll a help. hit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, and Kyle Bruce goes down, though. 25 here, immediately just gave his respect to the player of just, oh, that was a great hit. Yep, yep. that was. <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> so Saginaw needs to make sure they're not playing too conservative, too timid. 
there's still plenty of time. They need to be able to score another point if they're going to win this game. All right, I want to see some more team throws here. I love that. What was that, the trail ball that Adam Pfeiffer threw that really turned the game last time? Yeah, so they had a team throw, and he went right after that and took out a player. Threw it right to his chest, but he wasn't looking at it, so it didn't matter. That's great. And again, you know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, this is just dodgeball, but these balls are throwing at 60 to 70 miles an hour. These are some great players. You do not want to be on the receiving end of one of those top no, throwers. Uh, no, no. Especially if you get a shot to the face. I saw a brutal headshot yesterday. Came out of nowhere, hit somebody cross court where they were not expecting it. We'll certainly see some headshots today. And it looks like we had a shot clock violation just, just there when we are. Okay, so that was another, another shot clock violation, 15 second. Um, that meant that in 15 seconds, Saginaw didn't throw the ball. Therefore, they relinquish all the balls over to Akron. There's another, there's another stoppage of, of time. And these teams reset, and we're going to have Akron, who's commanding all the balls now, come in and hopefully get some team throw action here and catch somebody off guard. Yeah, I think if I'm Akron, i got to do team throw here at uh, Kenny Mize in the Let's middle. see if we can get going. No, they are not. Okay. They're setting one up over on the other side. Oh. And they got him barely. Oh, they got him barely. Great honesty. No, that was, yeah, great honesty. I was going to say the ref wouldn't have been able to see that. He was oh. just, that was just the integrity of the player right there. So Michael DeRoy there uh, barely clipped him. I bet it only just hit his hair, but he Good felt job, it, Mike. so he took, yeah. he took himself Good job, out. Mike. Whoa, love that maneuver. They got some guys scooting on their knees. Yeah, that was Joshua Lyons. Had some moves. Yep, he's a great catcher, and he, he, he's so good at getting low and getting a catch that's maybe thrown just like at his toes. He can still reach down and get that. Well, I love that you see the players who can rely on that because they're the ones that might be wearing knee pads. Yep. Oh, good look on the cross nice there. Nice look. And they call, they call Adam safe. They weren't sure if it hit him or not. Saginaw kind of disputing that call. They're trying to get this. Akron's trying to get this ball on, on Saginaw's side. All right, Akron c commanding most of the balls here, all the balls. Whoa, Oof. went high. So a little bit of sidearm throw there, and that'll give the ball a little bit of rise. Uh, so that one is coming upwards towards the head, but just a little bit too high. So why do we see? We saw Akron sort of, they were pushing, they were advancing in the neutral zone, and then they just started backing off. Was there a reason why? What's the strategy? Behind? Oh, is this for the rush here? Oh, and a hit. Wow. Yeah, so uh, once they threw, it, it becomes the other team's throw at that point. Got so. It. So their shot clock just got reset when got they it. make a throw. Uh, Saginaw hadn't reset their shot clock, so Saginaw has to throw next, force them to run in the neutral yep. zone and make a play. Got it. Here we go. Big throw opportunity. Oh, and that's a hit, I believe. I think he was already out. Oh, okay, okay. Yep, he was so we had a guy out. walking out, and he got hit again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Akron advances, gets some throws in. They're going to back off. And McDonald. Adam Pfeiffer holding the ground, slowly backs off. On SVSU's side, McDonald just did the oh, splits nice to dodge. Oh, a nice backhanded throw there. I missed the split. Oh, what a dodge. Wow, what a dodge on Adam. Here we go. We got a ball coming in. They're going to guard it. They're going to – excellent guard. They're going to backpedal now, let Saginaw actually advance into the neutral zone. And SVSU just seems like they're on their heels right now. They really do. We've got 15 minutes, 47 seconds left. Two to one, Saginaw. But it's Akron. I mean, it's up to Akron now to sort of keep Saginaw on their heels, keep pressing. Yep. Uh, yeah, they need to keep that momentum on their side. It's so important in the college game to keep your momentum going. And, and with them still trailing a point, they need to take another point before the end of regulation. So it's important they take this one. Oh, oh and a drop. Big drop catch fail. Oh, he almost got the kill on that. Yeah, and, th and that player was backpedaling, and he almost dodged his way into the ball. <laughs> almost, yeah. That would have been devastating for Saginaw to lose, on, lose a player on that type of maneuver. Here we go. Oh, nice good block. Throw. Two good throws by Akron. They are playing so much better this half than they were in the first half. They've really pulled it together here. Clearly, whatever Adam Pfeiffer was saying, their captain, it, it got the team organized, communicating. Oh. Nice kill. Wow, here we go. Number 95, really feeling it. Yeah, it's Joey Scott. 
Another veteran for Akron. Another veteran. Uh, both these teams have a lot of seniors, so they've been here before. They know they know what's on the line. Oh, and a hit. Wow. Tried to keep his foot in the. Yeah, and James Silk for SVSU here tried to go. catch, but oh, just that's wow. Wow. The ref oh, no. calls it ground, but it's too late. He already stepped out. Oh. So good honesty by Saginaw. Good again. honesty, yeah. So he. He would have been called safe if he just relied on the ref, but he felt himself get hit before it hit the ground, so he's out. I love that integrity. Yep, and that's uh, a crucial part of the sport of dodgeball is uh, kind of self-officiating. If you get hit, you got to go out. You can't wait for the ref to make the call. But SVSU down to here two we go, now. Here we go. We may have a tie game here in a moment. Momentum really swinging. Oh, wow! that's it? Oh, no, we still got, okay, good, okay. McDonald, last man excited. standing. Here we go. Last man standing in the corner. We're going to get some. Oh, what a dodge. N way to keep his one point of contact in play. Twisted into a pretzel. Twisted himself, but kept the toes in. Oof. That was. Ah, uh, shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. So he only has a 10-second shot clock now because there's less than five on that side, and he wasn't able to make a legitimate throw uh, within that time, so. For those just joining us, uh, we're here. First round of the day, round of 16 at College Dodgeball Nationals. Uh, and Saginaw Valley trying to hang on to a 2-1 to one lead, but it's not looking good for them right now with the ball's over call. They had all the momentum in the beginning, and they're trying to hold on to it, but Akron's really, they organize, they communicate, and they're getting back in this game. Here we go. We're getting Akron on the rush. They're going to try to make some team throws here, really throw this player off. Good uh -oh, pump fake. Uh -oh, wow. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And they got him. That's a kill. Do we have an official official point? Uh, and they call him out. Two to two. Akron and Saginaw. We have a little dispute from, nope. Uh, okay. So he, he was just making sure. He threw a little bit late, Adam Pfeiffer, on that one. But uh, technically, it was okay because the ball that did hit the Saginaw player, McDonald, bounced up into the air. Um, so... When you get hit, you're not eliminated until that ball that hit you becomes dead. Ah, uh, so in that ground. situation, that was great dodgeball IQ by Adam. Uh, the first ball that hit Saginaw's player popped up into the air. That's a ball that he could have caught still. He was yep. alive. Uh, so Adam made another throw to make sure that uh, he wasn't able to get to it. All right, so we got a 2-2 two two score right now uh, as the teams reset on the back lines here. Akron two straight points and we have an update from from the other game uh, one of the results Wisconsin Platteville takes down Georgia Southern three to one final uh, so a great game for for Wisconsin Platteville they've had a fantastic nationals so far uh, they forced Michigan State into overtime yesterday uh, the number four team in the country uh, so UWP great job for them uh, advancing to the next round and that was actually a play-in game round of 32 so they are now on to the round of 16 they will be taking on Miami University in the next match and we are reset 2-2 two two score 13 minutes ago Akron taking on Saginaw Valley State here and we are off and a quick kill on the sideline Akron down one 11 players left on their side. Saginaw still with a full 12. Good job by Josh Lyons for Akron. Staying up in the neutral zone. Really dictating the pace of the game for Akron University. Oh, and there's a catch by Kenny Mize. Takes out Lions. That can swing the momentum back to Saginaw. Here we go. Oh, great kill on Saginaw. And Colby Bryceling goes down, and that's two of Akron's leaders in the outline early. And the ref calls ground on that one. There's going to be some close calls, whether it hits you or, or the ground first. And uh, the ref called ground on that one, so he's safe. So a little bit of an early lead here with Saginaw. Yep, oh, was that a? Uh oh, uh oh, what a dodge. Oh, what a dodge. Oh, 
Unbelievable. So what you saw just just then, Captain Kenny Mize for Saginaw. He was stuck in a really tough situation. Akron had two guys running him down. He called a timeout. Wow. <laughs> so as long as the ball wasn't in the air, that ball is not live yet. Uh, so the timeout is called as long as the ref grants it. So uh, that's some that's some great in-game IQ right there. Unbelievable. Okay. So he, if he wouldn't have called that timeout, he would be in the outline right now. He yep. would have easily been taken out by one of those two Akron players that were charging down on him. <laughs> Amazing call by him. And he's already gotten a catch and a kill in this point. So that was huge. So is that, that I mean, that sort of IQ comes with experience, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what makes the difference for these teams and the 100%. depth of this, of this talent is understanding gameplay, the momentum, the flow of the game, and how to actually stop any momentum that can happen. Yeah, and that's why you need some of your veterans to be your captains because the only people that are allowed to call a timeout for your team are either a coach or a captain. Uh, and Kenny did a good job there keeping the momentum on Saginaw's side at this point. I love this player, Anthony Folletta. He, uh, right here, number 19, he is, he's holding on to his ball, but he is every time a player, he's just checking them, faking these throws, trying to keep Saginaw honest here and be defensive player. Yes, and I've spoken with uh, Akron's captains, and that is the role that they gave uh, him. So oh, basically, yeah. he needs to be a guy that blocks for his teammates and makes sure that the top gunners on that team stay alive. Love it. Uh, so that's a, it's a, an unselfish role, but uh, yeah. you, you need players like that if you're going to be a great team. And it looks like Anthony is just also, he just fed his gunner the ball. True. And so he is just, he's the one collecting, getting these, these top players, these top arms. Oh, here we go. Anthony keeping him honest. I love it. Good throw by Jake Bruce. Oh, oh nice. And I'm not sure who throw that threw that, but that was a fantastically that was a great throw. place throw. <laughs> so we've got uh, s relatively even. I think Saginaw's up one player. Here we go. Shot clock running down to one. We're going to need sort of these guys to make a throw here. They're still within their shot clock. We're going to get Saginaw advancing here. Great throw. And now we, one thing to keep an eye on, there's only 10 minutes to go in this game. So with a 2-2 two two score. Oh, oh, what a catch. What? Oh. Oh, and oh, they call him out. They called, they called him out. They, they called him out. Oh, what? Oh, team oh. catch. Whoa, nice great team job. catch. Player in. And that'll bring in. Uh, there's a team catch, so someone got to come in for Akron. All right, so we're trying to see who's going to come in for Akron. I, I believe they may, may have already gone in. Oh, okay. Uh, so there was one player out before Josh Lyons. So one more catch. And actually, Akron, I would argue their four best players are in the outline right now. Okay, outside so of, we've got. Outside of rookie Jake, Jacob Weber for them, their other four best players are. So their depth is that's going to be. Oh, that's oh. brutal. He was already out. <laughs> oh, man. Took a shot. Oh, Lyons <laughs> is not happy about that. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot on the line right now. Two to two, nine minutes left. I think what we were going to get at before is what we could, you know, if these two teams are kind of standing each other down, we might easily see a, oh, what a, a, sudden, catch. a sudden death playoff. We could, unless Saginaw can take a point in the yep. next eight and a half minutes. And Jake Bruce, oh, oh another hit. Another hit, 19. Wow. So he has made two catches and a kill. in the. Oh, and another catch. Okay, Saginaw really, we're seeing a little bit of sliding victory here. Oh, and, Check out what Akron's captains are saying right now. Oh. They're telling oh, their team to step out of bounds. Yikes. They're telling their team to. All right, so it didn't matter. They all got eliminated. So Akron's captains are not thrilled. Interesting thing what just happened there. Yes, please describe so what Akron was trying to get their team to do. So as you saw, Kobe Bryceland, Adam Pfeiffer over there on the sideline, they were yelling at the remaining four players once it got down to four or five to step out. Saginaw Valley was definitely going to take that point. They had yep. all the momentum. They had their full squad left, and Akron only had a handful of players, and they were rookies for, yep. for uh, le less experienced players for Akron. So in that situation, Akron knows they're going to have to score another point after they get beaten this point in order to tie the game. Uh, so, so then that was, I mean, that was a time-saving measure. Exactly. Okay. So they want to save as much time as they can because they have to take another point still to force this into overtime. They have eight and a half minutes left. Uh, three to two score, they're down right now, but if they would have let that one play out, who knows, it could have gone down to five minutes. 
So what we've got here is um, we actually just got an update on the other games. We've got um, Ohio 8-0 against DePaul. And then is University of Maryland 4-0 uh, against Northwestern State. Good games. So Are these surprise, surprising stats? I would say Ohio and Maryland were, were both the, the favorites in those matchups, but uh, you never know in, in bracket play. It's championship Sunday. Uh, there's going to be... There's going to be some upsets that happen. Now, a little later on, we're going to get a shot of this bracket. And we're actually going to go through some of these teams and, awesome. and really see the see the look to the championship here. Yeah. But right now, we've got a reset of these sides. We're going to have both of these teams rushing in. Eight minutes, 27 seconds to go. This is big for Akron. They just lost a, a big point. Um, again, I, and I think we got interrupted by some of the other the final um, numbers here. But you were saying that this was a strategy to try to save time Keep the momentum from really swinging. Get, oh. Oh, and a hit right off the bat. Yeah, so Akron, they have eight, eight, eight and a half minutes right now, and we have a stoppage already. But it was a time-saving measure, so who knows what would have happened with Akron only had four players left. Uh, there was a small chance they could have won that point, but most likely they were going to get taken out eventually instead of letting it go down to five minutes, four and then minutes, just right, right. and then losing the point. Because it's, it's on Saginaw to, like, they want to kill the clock. They know they're going to start, you know, exactly. getting this point. What I love is we saw something happen here. I don't know what, uh, what, what the call was, but zero to 60 on team passion in terms of, you know, <laughs> trying to advocate for whatever side. It's just boom. Yeah, and, I mean, we don't want to see tempers here, but obviously these, these players are passionate. They right. practice all several times a week at their schools they they work so hard for this moment and we're here in bracket play if you lose you're eliminated and you're going home all right again for anybody joining we're here at grand valley state for the 2019 national college dodgeball championships we've got the stands filling up both with players fans parents um this is a good time and we've got a great game going on right here we've got akron trying to get another point victory against saginaw Eight minutes left in the half. In the second half, Saginaw holding on to a one-point lead. Akron needs to press right now. They they need to get back to how they started the half. For those of you who might missed it, might have missed the first of the half. Akron's really coming back. They were two-two until they just missed a just missed a crucial point here. And a backhand throw, not even close. So and a oh, catch. Oh, great! 360 catch. Oh, another and a loss player so we've got a two-player swing here one player coming on to Saginaw it looks like SVSU is just taking control here I was rooting for these underdogs Akron you were telling me earlier that Akron hasn't won against Saginaw before correct yeah they they're a pretty young team Saginaw's been around they're they're much more established as a, as a, pl a club program uh, so this would be a huge win for Akron if they were able to pull off the upset oh he almost went for that ball and got told to back down by number and 61. Looks like the Cardinals are getting to their back line here. All right. They they don't have to press. Cardinals now. are going to press. Here we go. Ooh. Just missed. All right, Adam Pfeiffer throwing it in. Wow. Might have gotten a kill. Didn't seem like it hit the ground first. Another great throw by Saginaw. Again, we've got Saginaw in red, Akron in black. We've got Akron coming in, pressing into the neutral zone. They're going to make a throw here. Let's see if they can make a nice team throw. Oh, that was a great get by Captain Adam Pfeiffer. And you can see, oh, what a hit. A point blank shot. Jesus. We and didn't even get a kill on. Oh, we did end we up did. getting Josh a kill. Josh Lyons goes down. You can see Akron is playing much more aggressive. They kind of have to. Here we go. Showdown, showdown. What can we get out of this? Wow. Great teamwork wow. by Saginaw. Look at that. That was just him. That was one player backing down oh my. four Saginaw players. And Saginaw got. Oh, almost. Oh, he ended up did. He got the backhand kill. Wow. What a great throw. And, and there's no stepping out here for Akron. There's five minutes left. You, you have you to have win to this make point this play. To, yep. to tie the game. Here we go. Run down. Oh, great dodge. Great dodge. So the pressure is on for Akron right now, but they still have some of their better players in the game. They just need to execute. You still have five and a half minutes to go. It's just going to take one play at a time, get a couple catches. Oh, oh. And, and that'll help Kyle Bruce. Kyle Bruce. Arguably the best player on Saginaw's team gets knocked oh. out there. Trying to get a team catch, but hit, the wrong, yeah, hit the wrong team members on the sideline. Yeah. 
All right, here we go. We're going to get a throw. Oh, oh and a great kill. kill. Number right. 32 heads to, the, to let's, the jail. Let's see what Saginaw can get happen here. They still have about nine players left in the game, let's it looks like. see if they can get like. a team throw going. Oh, wow, what a hit. Now, are you able to catch the ball with your legs? Absolutely. Are you, are you not just hands? As long as the ref, uh, to the ref's discretion on if you have control of it, but you can catch it between your legs if that's the way it goes. We, I've seen when was that the last before. Time, when was the last time you've seen that in a big play? It's been a, it's been a little bit? It's been a while, but there are times where someone drops down to their knees and they end up catching it between <laughs> like their trapping, butt and their yeah. feet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But it'll happen from time to time. And I'm not sure what the stoppage of the play is here. All right, so it looks like um, it's like we've got seven players out here on Akron. So that means this is roughly five, five to five on ten, maybe five on ten, yeah, or five on nine. This would be quite the comeback if they were able to get this point. Still got four minutes, forty seconds, forty-seven seconds to go in the second half. So anybody who's joining out, the way points work in the NCDA is you have to get the team elimination. Team elimination within time of the, the halftime. Yeah, so anytime you eliminate every player on the other team, uh, you get a point. And right now, Akron needs to take out all of these remaining Saginaw players. Oh, that was, oh, that's a, good that was a devastating, devastating hit. We just got another, uh, another update here. Called. Yeah, so uh, it looks like Kent State uh, was able to take, take down Cleveland State in overtime. Uh, by a score of three to two, so that must have been a fantastic game. But good job by Kent State, uh, able to move on to the next round. They're one of the more storied programs in college dodgeball. And another that, reset of the that was a timeout call by by Akron. It looks like, and they they only have a couple guys left. They need to be the heroes right now and take down one at a time. You have four and a half minutes. It's going to come down to. Perfect execution. You're going to have to make a catch. Anytime a ball is thrown near you where it's reachable, you've got to go for it. You've just got to take your shot at this point. You've got to make that swing. This is not the time to play conservative. This is the time to force your hand a little bit and do the best you can. We've got a resilient player, though, here on Akron, um, young freshman Joey Weber, Jacob Weber. Jacob Weber, um, yeah. We've seen him be pretty clutch before, so. Yeah, and uh, a couple months ago they were playing uh, Ohio University, a team that we're going to see next here. Uh, and that game went to overtime. Jacob Weber ended up making four catches in overtime alone. Uh, and he was the last man standing at one point. But he can carry a team to victory even when okay, he's the last guy left. Uh oh. Wow, and he stays alive. Safe. Stays alive, stays all points of contact in. Here we go. What a great slide. I mean, what's that's got to be so hard. And a ball's over call. Is that a shot? That's a shot clock violation? Yeah, so okay. what, what we saw there was. Oh. But a shot clock violation was called, even though uh, Jacob Weber did make a throw that was fairly close to a Saginaw player. The issue is it has to cross your side of the new or into the neutral zone at the very least. So that ball didn't even cross the front throw line. So Saginaw would have had to step on the throw line or over it in order to even get hit. Got it. Yeah, so that was why it was called. And now at Saginaw, all they have to do is execute two team throws, and they're up two points, and it's basically over. Um... The shot clock violation came, might have seemed it came a little early here for Akron, but that's because they have below five players and they have a 10 second, 10 second shot clock violation as opposed to Saginaw's 15 second shot clock. Oh, oh and down goes Weber, that's down to one. Devastating. Oh, and he makes a catch. We still have one player in though. So, so he, he made a catch and he did he get catch, out? But then he was eliminated. Okay. So the next player okay, does next get to player. come in. Luckily for Akron, I would say it is their best all-around player for this type of situation, Joey Stack. Still alive. Here we go. Joey, let's see if he can make a catch. Oh. Wait. He's getting low. Sliding, you, a sliding around, getting low. You have to be careful with your placement of throws here oh, if you're sagging Oh, that could have been a great kill. for. So we actually saw Joey Stack. Oh, and he gets a hit. One of the captains of he. He, he took down one of Saginaw's players. One at a time. One at a time here. Now we need a catch. That's what we need right now. So Joey Stack actually got most. Wow. He's been getting a lot of the kills for Akron. Yep. One of their top players. Facing down what looks to be six. Oh, seven. Seven Saginaw players. Eight. 
eight. Oh. They got one hiding okay. in the corner one here. Hiding in oh, the and there's oh, the and catch. There's the go. Devastating catch. That's it. That's Jake Bruce makes the catch. That's Saginaw's play. Now four to two with three minutes left to go in the second half. Awesome That's job by them. going to hurt. <laughs> and that'll be the end of Akron season. We got three minutes to go here. Uh, and it looks like we're going to play those out. Uh, great season for Akron. This was the best team that they've ever had. Uh, unfortunate that they had to run into Saginaw Valley State in the round of 16. Uh, and Saginaw was just the better team today. But uh, fantastic job by Akron all year long. Uh, they've had some huge wins this season. But Saginaw gets to move on to the next round. And they're going to see uh, Grand Valley State. Ooh. Or, uh, actually, it'll be... Uh, Grand Valley State has one game prior to that, but uh, most likely they'll be playing the but one seed. Saginaw's going to be waiting. Yep. So, what you're telling me, though, is in a, in a potential huge upset, Grand Valley could lose, and then Saginaw could have the victory road paid for them without facing Grand if, Valley. If that happened, that would be absolutely ideal for, for Saginaw Valley. And... And they had a tough first round match. Well, roughly unprecedented for Grand Valley. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. GVSU on a 33 game win streak right now. So that wow. would be something. That would be something. Quick we got a kill. ball flying, flying our direction. And a couple quick outs and with only under three minutes to go now. And it, it's a two point game. Again, uh, these teams both fighting for the chance to play our reigning national championship, Grand Valley. Yep. Here we go. Team throw coming in. Akron's going to have to, wow, oh. Took him down from point blank. Yep. So this game's all but decided with two and a half to go now. Akron's going to try to make a, try to make some plays happen. They're going to have to be really aggressive. At this point, it doesn't matter, right? They're just going to have to. You would have to do the impossible and score two points within Right, within so they're just going to play as aggressive as they possibly can. Yeah. Because nothing matters if it's five to two, six to two. They just have to try to get that those two points. So. Correct. This is it. Akron could be sent home. Two minutes left. We're gonna see some magic here. Let's see if. And we will have. Oh, oh. and there goes. Great throw there. Takes down Joey Stack. Joey Stack uh, is he was out. He's the last man left. Last point as well. Here we go. Big throw. Oh, faked him out. And we have. Ohio University and Michigan State University waiting. They are on deck here on the main court, so that game will be live after this. One minute, 38 seconds left to go. Saginaw's leading four to two in the second, uh -oh. second half. Here Run we go. Down. Oh, nice Great dodge. dodge. Great dodge. Oh, no, it clipped his foot. He goes down. Oh, wow. So he almost got over it, but not quite enough uh, of a vertical. Some pretty impressive verticals for some of these guys. <laughs> oh, oh, easy catch. Here we go. Easy catch right to the chest. And one minute to go now. Looks like Saginaw. If I'm, oh. if, if I'm on Saginaw's side, I'm just saving my oh. arms at this point. Number 19 out. Took one to the bread basket. Yikes. Down to five for Akron. They may lose another point, but. Here we go. Another team throw. Good block. Good block. He's getting his ball. He's going to throw. There's a little sidearm throw. Didn't matter. It was shot clock violation. He almost had it. I mean, what, he was probably within a within a foot of actually making that throw within yeah. the shot clock violation. Well, the issue was, yeah, it was uh, the time ran out before he even made oh, that throw. Oh, got it. So he was just a little bit late, and that's part of the issue is you've got to get that ball within their reach before the time runs out. 41 seconds. Team throw coming up. This is very much going to be a Saginaw victory as they head on. Onto the quarterfinals. Akron's just in here for for pride. Basically, that's it. Oh. And one man left, 23 we had, seconds. We had number seven step out of field of play. Got to keep your foot in. Got to keep all, one point of contact in at all time. And another stoppage, 14 seconds left. Awesome job by Saginaw today. Uh, first game of the day for them. I know that they want to get as far as they can. They made the final four last year, uh, but it'll be tough to do that. They're going to be taking on the one seed most likely. <laughs> uh, but Saginaw Valley has made it to the quarterfinals every single year that they've played in the national tournament, which is quite the feat. 
So who's the Cinderella story here this, this year? Is it, is it Central? Is it Saginaw? I mean, that's something that we'll see what happens throughout the day and see how it plays out. One team to keep an eye on that we are going to see in the third round of games today is Miami University. Uh, to start the season last year, they weren't even in the top 25 power rankings. They were left off the list. We have a balls over call. Another, another shot clock violation, but what can you do when you don't have you got no, no shot at this point. No shot yeah. at this point. You're just hanging on. He's going to try to survive one more onslaught. We'll see if at this point it's it's all but over. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just for pride. Let's see if he can. Oh, he's just going to put one point of contact in right here. And hide. And hide. For three seconds. Okay, here we go. We're basically lining up at the corner. We're going to advance here. They're going to throw to the corner here where we've got a player just. Oh, and he got hit. No, they call him safe. So they're taking a pride on a so pride victory on him surviving the, the rush. Akron gets to celebrate that at least. <laughs> they get to celebrate that. Saginaw comes away with the victory 4-2. to two. Looking to most likely uh, take on Grand Valley, but you never know. You never know who, who could be playing. We'll be seeing this game coming up next. Yeah, and we will have another round of 16 matchup coming up next. That will be Ohio against Michigan State. So stay tuned in for that one. We're actually going to be joined shortly by the NCDA president. So great job by Saginaw Valley. Fantastic job by Saginaw Valley. And they, from the eight seed position, they were able to win that game against the nine seed Akron, as expected. It was going to be a close matchup, and Akron tried to push the pace there a little bit at the end, but it was too little too late, and Saginaw was just the better team. And it looks like we're going to get joined in a moment here uh, down at the court. As Akron uh, talking with their team after the game, tough loss for them, but uh, nothing to hang, hang your head on. Fantastic job by them. Uh, hanging with one of the best programs in college dodgeball, Saginaw Valley State University. And as I mentioned earlier, this was the best season ever for Akron. They they did a great job all year. And, and for a team that just joined the league a couple years back, uh, to be able to get to the point where you're competing with Saginaw Valley in an 8-9 matchup as a top 10 team in the country, that's something uh, that speaks volumes of, of the leadership of that team. Uh, and we're checking out some highlights here awesome first game we're gonna have games all day long all the way until the championship match this afternoon so stay tuned for that one here at Grand Valley State University the hosts for college dodgeball nationals 2019 and first game of the day for us we saw Saginaw Valley State uh, take down Akron in a game that uh, we saw a lot of fantastic catchers on both sides uh, Ryan Anglin there, one of those great catchers, and you see him trying to reach for one there. That was one of the points where Akron was able to steal the momentum back on their side. Um, a lot of great throwers in this game. For all the viewers that, that may be new to college dodgeball, you're going to see a lot of people throwing upwards of 70 miles an hour. Uh, we have the 8.5-inch rubber dodgeballs here, and they are whipping those balls. You do not want to be on the receiving end of that. So we're going to get down to uh, court side to have a quick interview with uh, one of the Saginaw players. All right, Gar, let's, let's talk with Saginaw here. We're down here with the Saginaw Cardinals. Great victory. You guys pulled it off. It was getting a little scary there. Um, it was two to two, and how'd you guys pull it off? What was the strategy? What did you? How did you guys need to regroup in order to actually overcome the t the tie? Uh, basically, we just said we need to go out there and start making a lot more catches. Because at first we, well, actually, our first half we were playing pretty well, and then when we started dropping a lot of catches. That's probably how we lost those points. But then once we started picking up those catches again, getting good counters, our momentum came back, and we started playing a lot better. 
Now, what do you say to the sort of the the other players on the team? Sort of your 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 the depth of the roster. How do you get them motivated? How do you actually sort of get it going so that they know? Hey, this is the circumstance in which we need to win. Uh, so sometimes we just get a little loud in the huddle, uh, make it serious, and get it, get them back in the game. Uh, came out a little slow in the halftime, and honestly, I think it was due to the score being two nothing, and we were trying to coast a little bit too much. Uh, I mean, even, even with coasting, you, you guys got the, the early lead. Um, how did you think that, what happened with Akron that they were able to sort of come back and actually push back against your, your team? Uh, Akron is one of the most experienced team in the country. Uh, they have a lot of seniors. They know how to play. They've been here. Uh, a lot of resilience to their team. I give it a handout to everyone. Colby Bryslin, Adam Pfeiffer, uh, Joey Stack, and Josh Lyons. That group of seniors is one of the best group of seniors in the country. Now, what's it like actually playing as brothers? I was actually really curious about that. Is there, how does the commu communication go between you two? Uh, well, it's a lot of making fun of each other. Uh, we're always trying to one-up each other, too. He's the better catcher, but we're always competing. It makes it fun. <laughs> That's good. OK, but at least you know that, like, he's got your back. You know, do you guys ever go sort of team, team throws at the same time? Yeah, there's a lot of times we'll do team throws. We'll just look at each other like, yep, our turn. Don't Let's do it. Let's do it. Out. Yep. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Well, I'm going to throw it back up to Kevin, and then I'll meet you, uh, meet you upstairs, Kevin, in a little bit, all right? Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And great job to Saginaw Valley. A lot of respect I'm for that team uh, and they, awesome. how they were able to win that game. And, and we have Michigan State playing Ohio coming up next, so everyone stay tuned. We're going to have that game in a couple minutes here. Uh, that should be a great matchup. Michigan State, the number four team in the country, but... Let me tell you, this team is young. They have a lot of inexperience, uh, but they have so much talent on, on their team up and down the roster. Their rookie class may be the best rookie class in the entire country, um, but they're going up against another team that has a great story, Ohio University. Back in 2016, they were 0-29, uh, and, and this team didn't win a single game all year, and, and now here they are. They're one of the better teams in the country, in fact, yesterday day one of nationals they forced number one grand valley state into overtime so that just goes to show you that they have uh when they get in their top gear they have what it takes to beat a top team and they're going to need that when they play michigan state in a couple moments all right i'm back so it looks like we're going to take a break a couple minute break then we're going to come back and talk to felix the president of the ncda